If you are given a layout drawing and asked to design the air conditioning system, how do you calculate the cooling load and determine the size of the system? For cooling load calculation, there are three common methods. The first method is rule of thumb. It is the simplest, but you need a lot of experience to do it right. The second method is CLTD, which is the easiest in terms of proper calculation. The third method is RTS and heat balance. They are the most accurate but often need computer software to help with the complex calculation. For this video, we'll use the CLTD method to calculate and then cross-check with the rule of thumb value. To start the calculation, we need to choose one side of the wall. The orientation is north, south, east, west. We'll start with the west wall. The west wall is 29.5 feet wide and the ceiling height is 10 feet. So the total area is 295 square feet. The area of each window is 15.5 square feet and we assume door is part of the wall, hence the net wall area is 202 square feet. The wall is made of a layer of 4 inch brick with 20mm thick plaster on both sides. We tabulate the wall layer into a table to find the overall U value. Layer 3 is brick wall and layer 2 and 4 is plaster. Layer 1 is outside moving air and layer 5 is inside still air. Using this table, moving air has an R value of 0.25 and still air has an R value of 0.68. We refer to this table for the wall material. The R value for 20mm cement plaster is 0.15 and the R value for common brick is 0 0.2 per inch. Since our brick wall is 4 inches, the R value is 0 0.8. With that, the total R value is 2.03 and the overall U value is 0 0.49. Now, the wall heat gain formula is U times A times CLTD. U value is 0 0.49, wall area is 202 square feet and now we need to find the CLTD. To find the CLTD, we first use this table to determine which group our wall falls into. For 4 inch common brick, we are in group D. Next, we use this table to find the CLTD value. For solar time, we use 15, which is 3 pm. The wall is facing the west direction. In group D, the CLTD value is 14. Based on the location, we apply the latitude correction using this table. We use May as our design month. The wall is facing the west direction. The correction factor is minus 3, brings our CLTD value to 11. Based on the color of the outer wall, we need to apply a color correction factor to our CLTD value. Assume our wall is light color, our CLTD value becomes 7.15. Finally, based on our indoor and outdoor design temperature, we apply the correction factor using these two equations. With all that, our final CLTD value is 20.15. With the CLTD value, we can now put the numbers into an equation and we get about 2000 BTU per hour for the wall heat gain. Next, we calculate for the window. We need to find the U value using this table. Assume our window is double glazing with low emissivity. The U value is 0.38. After that, we need to find the CLTD value using this table. Using the same solar time of 15, the CLTD value is 14. Again, we need to apply a temperature correction factor which brings our CLTD value to 17. Therefore, we can calculate the conduction heat gain of the window which is 601 BTU per hour. For windows, we have to account for the solar heat gain using this equation. A is window area, SC is shading coefficient, which we assume no indoor shading, so it is 1.0. For solar heat gain factor, SHGF, we refer to this table based on the location. Again, we use May as our design month and the windows is facing the west direction. Solar heat gain factor is 201. Next, we use this table to find the CLF. Once again, we use 15 or 3 pm for the solar time and west for the direction. Now, we have three options, L, M and H. We use M as the construction type and the CLF value is 0.4. Therefore, our window solar heat gain is about 7500 BTU per hour. In total, the window heat gain is about 8000 BTU per hour. Now, we have calculated the heat gain for the west wall. We'll do the same for the north wall and south wall. For the east wall, assume the kitchen also has air conditioning, the heat gain is zero. We also assume the floor above has air conditioning, so there's no heat gain through the roof. For cooling, the floor heat gain is zero. In total, the external heat gain is about 37,000 BTU per hour. 
Once we are done with the external heat gain, we need to account for the internal heat gain. First is the lighting. Assume the lighting heat gain is 1.0 watt per square feet. So the lighting heat is about 1500 watt. Convert watt to BTU per hour, get about 5200 BTU per hour. Next is people. Assume the maximum number of people is 100 packs. Using this table, dining area, the sensible heat is 225 BTU per hour per packs. The latent heat is 325 BTU per hour per packs. Now, we need to use this table to apply a load factor to the sensible heat. Assume 1 pm is the peak occupancy time from 1 pm to 3 pm, which is our design time, is 2 hours. Assume average eating time is 2 hours. Hence, our CLF is 0.58. With that, we can calculate the total sensible and latent heat due to people. As for the equipment, we assume zero for simplicity. In total, our sensible load is about 55,000 BTU per hour. Latent load is 32,500 BTU per hour. Now, this is the cooling load of the space. We need to account for system load such as fan motor heat, duct heat, and fresh air load. To do so, we need to use the psychromatic chart. I've covered the step-by-step -step process to determine the cooling coil size using the psychromatic chart in my previous video. You can find the link to the video in the description. Here is the final result of our calculation. The cooling coil size needed is 14.6 tons. So, how does this compare to the rule of thumb value? We can use this table to check our calculation. The occupancy is about 15 square feet per person. From the refrigeration square feet per ton, average value is 100 square feet per ton. Divide area by 100 gives us 15.34 tons. In comparison, our CLTD calculation is 14.6 tons. Both are within the typical range. If you have done similar design in the past, you can use the rule of thumb value to quickly estimate the size of your air conditioning system. If you find this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to learn more about heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.